Well, good evening and welcome to this Monday Thursday worship experience. I'm Pastor Joel and it is my privilege to welcome you uh, to worship this evening wherever you find yourself. I trust that you're in a uh, a safe, comfortable place and uh, are here to worship and hear uh, the important good news that we have to hear uh, tonight as we journey through this holiest of weeks. Just a reminder, if uh, you find yourself uh, at home and uh, have a candle nearby, go ahead and light that as a reminder of your uh, baptism and the baptismal promises that, that God makes to you and a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence with you. If you've got a blanket or a prayer shawl, wrap yourself in that and those are God's arms wrapped around you and uh, the warmth of this community too uh, because wherever, wherever you are, just know that we are all gathered together. Uh, just a couple notes. Uh, our uh, Holy Week worship continues tomorrow night uh, for Good Friday, so at 7 o'clock, both on Facebook and on our website, lordoflife.org, uh, so you can worship at 7 o'clock tomorrow night for Good Friday as well. Uh, tomorrow morning on Facebook, there's also a, uh, at 10 a.m., a uh, family Good Friday service, so uh, you can check that out tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And of course, we gather for Easter. Of course, gathering looks a little different this year, so uh, gather your family, uh, those who are living with you in front of uh, your device in front of the TV. Um, if you're going to uh, watch on Facebook, 9.30 on Easter Sunday is when we celebrate the resurrection. Uh, otherwise, uh, the service will be available at lordoflife.org starting by 5.30 on Saturday night for those of you who like to worship on Saturday night and available all through the morning uh, and through Easter Sunday as well. I want to thank uh, Brian Schrader for offering music uh, tonight. Uh, Pastor Caitlin, who will offer a good word uh, for us. Pastor Dave, who is also assisting tonight. Fred Lillibo and David Olson uh, for keeping our tech moving forward. And so with that, wherever you find yourself, if you're not too comfortable, please stand as you're able as we sing. Hello, everyone. Let's sing together. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul? For my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking. When I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. I will sing while millions join the theme. I will sing. And when from death I'm freed, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm freed, I'll sing. From death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be, and through eternity 
I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. One wondrous love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul? To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this new commandment in our hearts. Feed our spirits and refresh our bodies so that we will serve others in the ways we best can during these days. We pray this in the name of the servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for this evening comes to us from Psalm 116, beginning with the first verse. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call in the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your servant girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Here ends the reading. Our holy gospel tonight is from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. Please stand as you are able. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet 
had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater, uh, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now you may be seated, find your, find your blanket, get comfortable in your chairs. Last week I ventured out of the house to do the needed grocery run. Supplies were running low, fresh produce had become non-existent in our house. Somehow now is the time that my children decide that they need to have growth spurts. If this were a month ago, I would have gladly relished in the opportunity to go to the grocery store alone. I would wander the aisles, dream of the meals that I would cook if my family actually ate vegetables, and bask in the time alone while still being around other people. As you may know all too well, that is not our current reality. Instead of the day dreaming lollygagging that I normally do, on this particular day, I spent about five minutes sitting in the car before entering. I made sure the list was organized, so I got what I needed. I had my gloves and my face mask rearing and waiting, and I was watching others to see if they also had protective gear. I carefully planned out every detail to minimize my time in that space. Now, our family isn't immunocompromised, but the thoughts of getting the virus and bringing it home place a heavy weight on my heart. A weight almost as great as the one that worries about silently spreading it to others. So as I entered the store, I maintained my distance and I followed all of the procedures. And while I was there, it was interesting to notice how many things looked and felt the same as before. But the overall feeling of being there shifted. On a normal day, there would have been, you know, 50 different options of the exact same thing. But now with some of the more common items, there are far fewer. If this were a normal day, there would have been outrage at the lack of options. I mean, it would be deemed unacceptable. Why don't they have the big container of Jif peanut butter? Generic brand fro frozen vegetables don't taste the same as name brand. But not these days. These days, no one complained. No one asked to speak to the manager. If anything, there was a sigh of relief to be able to go home with the two boxes of pasta of a brand that I've never heard of before. Because, well, it meant that I got to go home with two boxes of pasta. And in the moments where strangers unwittingly ended up in the same space as one another, there was a shared moment Eyes met. The only thing it seemed to convey was a, a, a non-verbal, are you okay? Am I okay? And a slight sigh of relief that, well, nothing happened in that moment, and off we went again. In these moments of venturing into the wild, into these spaces that are seen as unknown and potentially scary, we are experiencing a very real-time shift in priorities. We are less concerned about the things that we want or the overabundance of options that we had before and instead focus more on what the immediate needs are. Staying healthy, keeping others healthy. We're learning in real time how to work together to keep our communities safe by asking questions that we never thought we would have to wrestle with. Like how do we learn how to function while keeping six feet apart? How do we share our resources or check on our neighbors? How do we go about our day-to-day -day lives when really all we want is everything to go back to the way they were before, even though we know that we are being forever changed? These deep needs that we are wrestling with now are 
not new. In fact, they show up most vividly in times of uncertainty and unrest, which is probably why we're experiencing them now. In our gospel reading for today, we see the early disciples in a different scenario, but one with a similar feel of uncertainty. Jesus has been leading and teaching them for three years. They have placed their trust in him and have uprooted their lives to this mission and ministry that he shared with them. I imagine that they have their rhythms and routines as they travel along the way, witnessing miracles, taking off Pharisees, sharing the good news with unlikely strangers. Expecting the unexpected would have had to have become a second nature to them. But today's scenario is different. If they were paying close, paying close enough attention, they would have known that his donkey parade into Jerusalem would have been crossing the line. Pontius Pilate was not one to make angry and word was certainly going to get around. Plus, as the gospel writer shares with this insider information, Judas Iscariot was already planning to betray him. So as they gathered together, preparing for the Passover meal that was to come in the days ahead, I imagine it being one of those moments where, moments where time seems to bend, where you don't know quite what day or hour it is, only that it doesn't feel normal, where it isn't measured in minutes or hours, but by labored breaths or trips to the store or the last time you chose to get ready for the day. It had to have been a moment of life where every nerve is numbed and sharp at the same time, as each day brought unexpected news and, and an unforeseeable future. Jesus knew that his death was drawing near, and they must have felt it too. After all, Jesus was not one to mince words, even if they couldn't always figure out what he was saying. And in this time of great uncertainty, as they were sharing a meal together like they had done countless times before, Jesus once again changes everything. He takes off his outer robe, grabs a towel, and uses it to wash their feet. Now foot washing, while foreign to those of us who wear shoes on a regular basis and do not live in a desert, was a common practice back then. As one entered a home, typically a lowly servant or slave would have been the one tasked with washing feet because, well, feet get kind of gross pretty quickly. To have one's feet cleaned meant that they were welcome to come in. It was an act of hospitality to clean that part of the body that became dirty, that part that many tried to hide or were ashamed of. And it's unique here because Jesus chooses to do this seemingly really gross task mid-meal. Their teacher, the one they looked up to and admired and placed their trust in, defies every social protocol and assumes the role of a foot washer, a role they most likely overlooked as they went through the routine of entering the home that day. When I was in my first call as a pastor, I led many youth mission trips in my years there. The organization that we partnered with had a rigorous schedule throughout the week so that the participants became immersed in the community, that they would have rich worship opportunities and time to reflect and get to know each other. These weeks were often really exhausting, pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zones. And at the end of each experience, our closing worship service included a foot washing, where the leaders washed the feet of the students. We would read this scripture that we heard here tonight and make our way around the circle, washing feet and saying prayers. Many youth, upon hearing about what was going to happen, were nervous or scared through the afternoon. Some were embarrassed due to the lack of showering that tends to happen on mission trips. But when it came time, taking that moment to pause and letting someone else do such a vulnerable act for you, well, it's quite honestly a holy moment. 
the wellspring of whatever worries or shame that you hide bubble to the surface. The exhaustion of having worked hard on little sleep begins to creep in. And hearing the message that through it all, Jesus does this for the disciples and does this for you is enough to make even the toughest teenagers cry. This was the only time where I have ever experienced as teenagers willingly giving up their electronics because they wanted to be fully present in the moment. Because of what Jesus did for his disciples and calling them to go and do likewise, this offers a powerful visual of where grace and grit collide, where the holy meets the ordinary, where the mystery of God walking, talking, and breathing as a human being on this earth finds humanity's deepest need, that need to be safe in relationship with others, to be loved. As Jesus shares with his disciples why he is doing what he is doing, he offers them a new commandment. Continuing in the story, Jesus says, I give you this new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In this time that we are currently in, where life seems to stand still, where the days are really, really long, and the weeks are awfully short, where we forget what day it is, we long to have those deep needs met. At least I know that I do. And it's tempting to want to dream about everything going back to the way things were before, before any of this happened. But that's where the beauty of being made clean through this foot washing metaphor becomes so important. In washing the disciples' feet, washing off whatever shame or guilt they hide, Jesus offers them a place at the table with him and offers them new life a new start for the days to come. It's saying that what has been has been and will always be there and begs us to ask, what do we really want to bring into the future? Now, I know I have been spending far too much time on Facebook. I have to admit that to maybe get me to stop being on there so often. And while there's the fear of the unknown that circulates and the stories of humanity at their worst, there are far more beautiful stories of humanity coming through at their very best. Some small efforts that include, are included in this are the efforts to help medical professionals to have the necessary precautions. We've seen the sewing communities rise up around the country and come together learning these new patterns to help prevent the spread. Small businesses, while they have much to worry about, also support the relief efforts in the ways that they can. Even zoos are playing their part and videotape their penguins exploring the exhibits to offer relief. Oftentimes we see stories of people who can offer what they have and find ways to be helpful. This is where we experience God breaking through the tough situation that we find ourselves in. I mean, in these tough and callous spaces, God meets us and gives us what we need. And through, well, through humbling our egos, working together and being blessed as Jesus says, because we realize that we are not greater than one another, we can begin to imagine what a better future will look like a future built on love, built on equality, built on the principle that everyone, with no exceptions, is worthy of that love. Jesus says, I give to you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also shall love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples 
if you have love for one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Caitlin. Let's sing another song together, and I invite you, wherever you are, to be brave and sing along. It feels good. It uh, can be uniting, and it can be calming. Uh, and if not, maybe uh, just focus on these words. These words uh, sing about uh, God's great love, which is unending. Um, so let's raise this song today. is love vast as the ocean loving kindness as the flood when the prince of life our savior shed for us his precious blood let's sing that again here is love here is love vast as the ocean Loving kindness as the fly When the Prince of Life our Savior Shed for us His precious blood Who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing His praise He can never be forgotten Throughout heaven Fiction fountains open deep and wide through the flood gates of God's mercy float a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in and from above, and heaven's peace and perfect justice. Just a guilty world in love Who his love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout heaven's eternal days Oh is higher, no love is wider, no love is deeper, no love is truer, no love is higher, no love is wider, no love is like your love, oh Lord. Let's sing that again. No love is higher, no love is wider, no love is deeper, no love is truer, no love is higher. No love is wider. No love is like you love, oh Lord. One more time. No love is higher. No love is wider. No love is deeper. No love is truer. No love is higher. No love is wider. No love is like you love, oh Lord. as the ocean loving kindness as the fly when the prince of life our savior shed for us his precious blood Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. 
God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us during this time of isolation. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate, farm, and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Bless the farmers and growers, the harvesters and tillers, the transporters and grocery store workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you give us a new commandment to love one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief in humanitarian aid to your people around the world. Keep our healthcare workers safe and healthy during this time. We thank you for the work of Cross and Gethsemane Lutheran Food Distribution and all who are providing financial support through the I Can Help initiative during this time of desperate need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or furloughed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Heal all divisions and bring us unity. May your love and welcome be known to all. Lord, in your mercy. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we just heard in the prayers, one of the things uh, that we're doing here at Lord of Life is, uh, is helping out. And, and we've uh, introduced the I Can Help initiative. It's, it's a way that we can live out the command that Jesus gives us to, to serve our neighbor, uh, even in this time when we're supposed to stay apart. And so one of the th ways we can do that is by uh, giving of our financial resources over and above our typical giving. And so the I Can Help initiative is uh, a way that the funds will be used in three different ways. One is to our uh, food distribution partners at Cross and Gethsemane Lutheran Church to make sure hungry people are fed. Uh, another uh, third of the uh, um, dollars go to uh, support Lord of Life members who are affected by this situation because we know that this faith community uh, is not immune from the effects of, uh, of this time. And then also the, another third is to support the ongoing ministries of Lord of Life, which support everything else, both as a part of the I Can Help initiative and everything else that makes this such an important, valuable congregation uh, to each and every one of you who are worshiping with us tonight. So thank you for being willing to stand up and say, I can help. The offering will now be received, and your typical offering uh, can be given in many different ways at lordoflife.org backslash give. Uh, you can text to give at 763-703-2058. Text the word give to that number, or of course you can always mail in your offering check. And Brian, you have a, a word in song to offer us, and thank you for that. Lord, I 
as we turn to you. Come free us from our sin. We only have today. So let us now begin from dawn to This, as you know, is a unique Maundy Thursday. So I just want to take a moment to, uh, to highlight what is perhaps the most unique, perhaps even more so than worship being virtual or, or online. It's that we're not celebrating Holy Communion. And it's, uh, it's got to be the first uh, Monday Thursday in my life since I started receiving communion when I'm not receiving communion. And, and just so you know, um, there are churches who are doing virtual communion or other things. So I just want to take a moment to explain why we at Lord of Life are not. So one idea that's come up is, well, what if we kind of set up a drive through outside and, and have it as safe as we can but, um, and, and have people kind of come up and go, but that, you know, we've got this stay at home thing going on and we don't want to encourage people to, to flout uh, those guidelines and those restrictions and regardless of what, um, what steps we take, there's still just too much danger in doing that. So then the question comes up, well, well, why don't you just have us get bread and wine at our house and then you say the words and then we do it where we are, except 
as we pastors were, were kind of talking about that um, uh, uh, in the last few weeks, what, what came to mind as I was thinking about that, if, if I were sitting at home and, uh, and that was the instruction given to me, I, my mind immediately went to, okay, we've got bread. I know, I know where our bread is. But we don't have any wine or grape juice in our house. Not that we have anything against wine or grape juice. They, was, they just aren't things that we typically have around at home. And so then my mind got to thinking, would we be unintentionally excluding people from communion if we said, well, get those things on your own? Or would we be forcing people to say, well, you know, get your tortilla chips and tequila shot and make that as a substitution. But that's, that's not what communion's about. There's something <laughs> about, about being together. There's, that's the word, communion, community. And, and even though there's so much we can do online and do virtually, um, I'm just not comfortable um, uh, taking that step. And, and, and it's okay, the church has endured other uh, hard, hard things where times where the church has not been able to meet together. Um, we can teach a church history class about that when we're back together. But, but just know that I trust it'll be that much more meaningful when we do gather back together in person the first time um, to, to gather for the meal together, that waiting is indeed worth it. And so since communion is this sign of God's presence with us, we can first know that, 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 that Jesus is fully present in, in the word, both as we read it and as it's proclaimed. So as you, as you heard Pastor Caitlin preach tonight, Jesus was there. As you read your Bible and do your devotions, Jesus is there. And, and what we can do too is, is, is pay attention to all the ways that God comes to us in the ordinary, in the everyday. And, and uh, Pastor Caitlin, the, the line you had in your sermon is, is, is that there's this, this promise from Jesus, it's that... It's where the holy meets the ordinary. And so the question that I um, invite the two of you to, to just briefly let us uh, know, um, uh, just give us some, some thoughts about is, is what bold acts of love have you seen lately? As we look for God in the ordinary, what are some bold acts of love that, that you've seen lately? Pastor Dave? <laughs> Bold acts of love. Wow, it's, it's uh, you know, I was thinking of that word, uh, bold, as like so many things. I, I, I think about it differently today than I would have a month ago. Um, and with uh, bold acts of love, I think about the, uh, the martyrs in the early church and Martin Luther and the Reformation and, and uh, so many examples of bold acts of love that I've seen today, but uh, one, one comes to mind and uh, uh, bold act of, acts of love are, are an individual in our church that uh, when the news of the crisis the first came out, the first time we heard about the virus, Cindy Cadwallader started sewing. She started sewing face masks and uh, she continued to sew face masks. And uh, when we uh, looked at uh, how we are going to provide, uh, help provide food in North Minneapolis and the Northwest Metro, uh, uh, the workers need face masks. And uh, my wife Lisa called up Cindy and said, do you have any extra face masks? Well, within a week, Cindy has, uh, Cindy's husband Jake has dropped uh, 100 face masks off on my uh, doorstep, ring the doorbell, wave as, as he heads down the street, and I in turn have uh, dropped those 100 face masks on the doorsteps of Gethsemane Lutheran uh, where they're being used. Uh, just that, that just started to spread. Then uh, Judy Albrecht last night, she and Al stopped by, rang the doorbell, drove away. There's another package of, uh, of face masks. Uh, and uh, as I delivered, I delivered this morning uh, and they were getting ready for the food shelf. And one of the guys, uh, big guy, must be 6'3", 250 pounds. He's down there and he's got one of, uh, one of Cindy's face masks on, except uh, she had used uh, some material she had around the house from Marvel Comics, the superheroes, right? Yes. And so he had the superhero um, uh, mask on, and, uh, <laughs> and I said, ah, you're, you're a superhero. I said, yes, I am a superhero. Nice. And he truly oh. was a superhero on the north side. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, bold is a whole new definition these days, yeah. I think. Great. How about yep. you, Pastor Caitlin? I'm finding bold in seemingly ordinary moments. It's interesting that you pull that out. Um, First of all, I want to say that those who are on the front lines, like at grocery stores, gas stations, I mean, in the medical field, 
that is bold and that is beautiful and um, they're really necessary in this time. Um, one of the other places where I've experienced a bold act of love this past week, um, and admittedly in my sermon, I did say I spent too much time on Facebook, um, but that is where I've experienced a bold act of love um, in the role of grieving. Uh, my aunt passed away this past week, and when the, we can't gather together, it's the next best thing. And that's a bold act of love to sit in front of this screen and weep with people that you can't see but know are weeping also. And so the power of reaching out to those when things like that happen. She did not die virus related. Um, it was, she had cancer that spread way too quickly, but it was just one of those moments where I kind of felt shell-shocked and grateful for this place and grateful for the people who met me right there. Well, thanks you both, thanks you both for, for sharing. And, and I know that as, as followers of Jesus, our bold acts of love are all ultimately inspired by, by his bold acts of love. And we heard about the, the foot washing and, uh, and the Last mm -hmm. Supper tonight. Um, but we'll also, as we journey through Holy Week, we, we hear where Jesus' story leads him, which is ultimately to the cross. And among those words that uh, he says on the cross, um, uh, one of those words comes from Psalm 22, which is traditionally read on Monday, Thursday. And so in keeping with that tradition, uh, we will hear um, about this. We'll hear from Psalm 22, uh, which is what we hear in Jesus' ultimate and boldest act of love. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver. Let him rescue the one whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. 
May your heart, may your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow, bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done 